Hello everybody, welcome back to Spruverse, my scale model universe, people of Earth. A brand new build on the bench today. We're going into the world of Jerry Anderson. Uh, something that I grew up with as a child and, you know, I was a huge fan. I mean, whether it was obviously all the super marionette shows. And then, of course, when he went to live action and, and did UFO, it lasted 26 episodes. And then it was canceled, but cleverly converted into Space 1999. And the rest, as they say, isn't history. <laughs> but uh, I've been a huge fan of uh, the, the shows. But more importantly, I wanted some Jerry Anderson models in my collection. And I'm starting with the Shadow Interceptor. Now, this is the Moonbase Interceptor, technically. And this is a file that is um, what was cre created by a very talented uh, designer by the name of Alan Rivard. I found him through Randy Newbert over at Voodoo Effects. And then one thing led to another, and then I discovered Sean Homer, who has 8K miniatures and props. And what's exciting about all of this is, is if you do not have printers and you want to build this, you can. Because all you have to do is either uh, go to Sean's site or reach out to Alan, uh, get your files, and then you know hook up with, with Sean. And don't worry, I'll make sure all that information is in the description below. And you can get this kit. Not a lot of parts, but a really nice scale. And I thought it would be fun to do this and uh, uh, tr tr try to do it as uh, efficiently with a lot of fun. And uh, here we go. Okay, so it's all in front of me, and um, the, the, the body comes in two halves, and it is, you know, it, it's, a, it's a matter of joining this together. We do have this seam we're going to have to take care of, but we'll take care of it, and you get a really substantial body. I, I just wanted to show you, here's the, uh, the engine that goes on the back, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll connect that up here just so that you can see that uh, on. Um, everything fits together quite cleanly and now what I've done is is I I'm gonna be adding some brass rod to the engines curiously I looked at the filming miniature that survived um, which which is a great story by the way there was a filming miniature that was sent to dinky so that they could actually have photo accuracy on their dinky model uh, well we all know how that turned out <laughs> I mean I don't know who missed the color palette, but there you go. We, went, we ended up with uh, some kind of hideous green. So, so much for sending them over the files. But what's interesting is, is when you look at those filming miniatures, and, and there was one, there was two that I think uh, are known to have survived. One went up for auction. But uh, when you looked, you know, down the rear of it, you didn't get any of this detail. It was just an empty hole. It was just black. So, um, but I do appreciate uh, the the detail, and um, it's going to make a it's going to make a super relatively uh, relatively accurate. It's not I don't go cannon here, but relatively accurate. But when I line this up and I get my nuke torpedo on the front, um, I think you'll see that uh, the the size of this is quite impressive. Look at this scale. Look at this. That's a very impressive, and I'll tell you where we are. That's um, in uh, in U.S. feet and inches. Sorry, we're still in the back country here. You are looking from tip of of the missile to the end of the engine. You're looking at a very impressive twenty inches. Twenty inches, and then um, here's your here's your uh, your, your top that plugs in um, and here are your side engines that go in one on this side uh, we'll just drop this in Let's see here Let's see let me pick this up so that I don't fight it that goes on the other side that's why I couldn't do it there you go Okay, so that goes in like that. That connects to this like this. We've got the engine in the back here. 
which will drop in. Uh, you've got your top uh, engine, which will drop on like that. And then you've, you've got your tail fin stabilizer like this. And I think you'll agree, you start to see a very impressive model. Now, there are some details that I want to show you uh, up close before we dive into this because the first thing I'm going to do is get a coat of the insignia white on everything and once I've done that uh, I'll be able to start um, finishing up the interior because I, I have to get uh, you'll see here um, that this is where your exposed engine parts go and that drops down into here now obviously Alan is is not a model maker he's a designer now I don't say that to be rude I'm just saying that if it was a model maker most likely this would have been cut here now I don't recommend you slicing it off uh, because he's got panel lines here and it would be complicated you certainly could do it if your skill level is up and you want to do that you certainly could I'm not gonna mess with it what I've done is is I have finished the rear here just for expediency lots of uh, added little lead pipage I've done here um, and I've added a little bit of color and some pastels and I think we get a really nice look now when you drop this into the the model um, and I believe I've got I might have I shouldn't have anymore uh, any anything that's sort of restricting this from from dropping in here but when you do drop it in that's what's left and you, we, we, we get a, a really nice uh, a really nice finish here I've just got to get this cleaned up so this goes in nice and flush on both sides but uh, I've added enough mechanicals to where that looks pretty cool I think I think it looks pretty cool so I'll I'll work on that off camera because it it, it shouldn't be it, it, sh it shouldn't be locking up whoops shouldn't be locking up so I'm gonna do that because I have to get that in um, I have to get this in and then I have to also get the cockpit in now here's the cockpit lots of detail there is lots of opportunity here for if you want to like this uh, I am not going to there is a figure that comes with it however you'll discover if you print him that his legs he doesn't fit behind so it's the classic you know amputate the legs so he can sit in uh, but I might go ahead and do that and then I'll fashion a uh, a nice vi visor to go over the face uh, because um, I just think that that will look a lot more dramatic um, so we'll do that but then I've what I've got to do now is I've painted this in the base color because according to production stills it was very much a world of beige uh, like this a sort of an off sandy beige or brown if you wanted to and then I'm gonna dry brush the rest of the world in in metals um, and I'm gonna paint up this uh, this this seat um, and we'll, we'll we'll do that we'll have a lot of fun with getting this all dry brushed and then once this is done it slides in like this and uh, then you have to here's your canopy top and you've got to create a window now I've done that with my own um, vacuum forming little kit that I've got here so I've created myself a window and that slides behind here like that and it's nice and crystal clear so I've got that ready to go I don't know if Sean over at 8k miniatures is actually vacuum forming windows I don't know I don't know um, I haven't asked him but I will ask him uh, if that comes with the model you could ask him too <laughs> um, okay so um, as I said I'll, I'll put links to everything but he uh, but it but it's um, but it's really nice it's nice and clean I've got um, I've just got a, a little bit of work I'm gonna have to do on uh, the inside of this I've just got to sand this up and make sure that that's finished because you will be able to see it um, even with the, the canopy on you will be able to see down in there um, if I was to light this I would put maybe perhaps just a little overhead light in here maybe 
um, and then run it. But I don't want to. I, I, you know, there's nowhere to put a battery in this, so it would. I would. I would have to come out. Um, would have to come out the uh, the bottom here, which is fine. There is a there is a place to do that, and then just sort of drop it to a little umbilical, and then you, you you'd be able to see in there. May do that. May do that. We'll see. Um, we'll see. We'll see how we fare. Um, so this is all very exciting. Um, I'm I'm super happy to be able to work to be working on this, um, and uh, we will we'll, we'll plow on. So uh, let me get a, a a base coat on on everything. I've got a little bit of sanding to do, but I'll get a base coat. I'm going to be as I said. I'm going to base coat it with my uh, insignia white. Which is really, it's more, it's got, it's got a hint of gray in it. Um, and then once we've done that, what I'll do is, is we will come back and uh, we will, um, we, we will get, uh, we, we'll get our cockpit. We'll start dry brushing and working on the cockpit. Because once we install that, we can seal this up. Um, but we'll have to make a decision about that light first. And then uh, once we've done that, uh, then uh, we're off to the races because everything else is just really about paint and decals. So um, here we go. Very excited. I think this is going to be quite dramatic. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to working on this with you. So uh, let, let me get a coat of, uh, of, of the Insignia White on everything. Uh, and then we'll come back and I'll do some dry brushing on camera for, for the cockpit. And that would have given me some time to think about lighting. So that is one of the... The, the, the sort of the the things you have to think about is how dynamic do you want this to actually be and I do want it to be dynamic it's a beautiful it, it's a beautiful kit so it deserves to be finished with the be, with 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 almost like a, a studio like quality uh, and I've noticed that interestingly enough the the finish on these things I mean which is typical right they um, they were never designed to be seen super close. They were always shot from a distance. And that makes a huge difference. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a production miniature. It was a production miniature, so it was never intended to be seen the way we like to look close up at our models. So it does make a difference. But um, that's okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, I'm going to get some brown in this cockpit. It um, it wants brown in it, so uh, just a little bit, not too much. And this is an earth brown, so it's kind of it's quite a rich brown. It's not a. And I think it it, it was just more about trying to create um, just trying trying to create some you know some some sort of stuff some just some color palette here because it otherwise it's something you'll never you'll never really see but I dry brushed the top of this and um, so now I'm just putting I'm making this uh, this control console brown you'll never see it you might see a little bit of it if you can peek in the um, in the cockpit frame but I thought just to sort of change things up a little bit I'd uh, I'd make it brown so I'm working on that and as we discussed earlier as soon as this is these are all finished and I'm happy with it and I've decided it, if I'm going to light it, if I am going to light it, then I've got to get that light in there. And then once that light's in there, then uh, I can close this puppy up. Everything's getting a coat of the insignia white, as I said. So uh, that's the base coat for the whites. And then after I've done that, I intend to... Um, I intend to start with the uh, paneling. I'm going to panel everything with uh, 
various different greys. Sort of not dissimilar to what I did on Tiderium. And then once I've done that, I can go to work on the whites. This is going to come together quite well. So I'm going to just let that dry and I'll pick out some other things. I'm liking my um, Despay acrylic paint pens. This is real paint. And um, I'm able to... I'm able to sort of pick out things like uh, there's there's a light panel here. Um, and what I'm able to do is just pick it out. And then um, I've added a little bit of red too to those corners as you can see. And, uh, and then I'm just sort of going around and, and, and picking everything else out which I which I can do with these pens a lot easier than I can do with a paintbrush. I just feel like I've got a lot more control. So that's what I'm doing. That's what's going on here. Um, let's see, I think I'm, oh here it is. Yeah, it's the wrong color though. I was looking for, uh, that's not, that's not the yellow, no, I think this is, yeah. Here's my brow. <laughs> okay, no laughing in the back there. Trying to get as much color back here as possible because once this is all sealed up, even though I'm going to put a light in here, I'm going to put a light in here that is very um, mellow. Now, I know there's going to be some of you out there who go, well, it was never that color. Well, you know how I feel about that. <laughs> I think this looks really cool. And I think it's really starting to come together. And you can see we're just sort of building layers, building layers of color. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep working on that. And uh, give this another coat of the of the earth brown and then I can always pull things back I can change colors if it's the wrong color if it's not working it's paint right so it can all it can all we can start it again so no there's no uh, no issues here everything has a coat of the insignia white on it now some things are drying I've just got a couple of pieces here that are going to need uh, metallic colors what I'm going to try and do with these metallics is try try to give try to give each one of these pieces some definition rather than just one color it's got to have different shades now it's going to get some some washes but the various different elements on these uh, on these pieces like especially when you're dealing with the the the, the part that will be the metal element that make makes up the hydraulics and the landing uh, the actual landing gear itself it, it, it needs to get some uh, different colored metals and really get detailed out so it separates itself from the actual ski so I'm going to be working on that as well but at the moment what I'm doing is um, I'm gonna just get a little bit of I've got to get black inside of here so that when my finished engine piece drops in, and we've 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 seen this already. Once this drops in, uh, then we we won't have uh, we won't have any issues. It seems to be sitting quite flush right now. I'll show you. I've I've managed to um, to get this quite flush. So I'm just going to get some black in there, and then I will mask that out because. Uh, I have to get these elements in before I close it up. It's just the way this model is designed, unfortunately. But that's what we're that's what we've got. So that's what we're that's what we're going to do. I need to get in there and uh, just make sure that that well that dries sufficiently. So that's what I'm uh, working on now. So uh, I'll get that I'll get that blackened out, and uh, it'll get a couple of coats just to make sure it's nice and clean and then the next thing we can do is we can finish working on the the cockpit which I have here 
and I've been working on this. So it all it's all looking pretty clean. Uh, I've got a little more detail I want to do, but I'm going to put some washes on this next and just pick out, um, might pick out a little more of the blacks, but I think that's about all I need to do. Uh, and then I will work on the figure. We've masked the missile and I have blocked off the various panels that I want to be darker. So now that's done, everything can get a coat of the white and I'm going to use the zenith white for the whole ship. And, and I'm going to be dusting this on in layers and so we'll do one layer and see where we are and then we'll just keep going back, let it dry, very dusted, very light coats and we'll just keep going on and going until we get this to where we want it. Um, and then that should lock this in. Once that's all locked in, and I'm not going to worry, since it's white, I'm not going to worry about getting anything on here. Um, I could mask this off. I, prob I probably should, just so that I, I, I don't cause myself any pain later. But the point is, is that once we get this where we want, then uh, we can seal that, and then I can finish the tip. I've done one dusting. Pulled it back quite a bit. And uh, I'm sort of letting it dry in just a little bit here before I, I carry on. But I think that we're almost there. I don't, I don't, I don't think it, it needs too much more than this. But, um, you know, the white's getting quite white, which is a good thing. I'm being careful, but I'm also realizing that I can go a little further. And that's a good thing. You know, I can always adjust backwards, but I think you can start to see that even in this light, it's still subtle. And I think that's a good thing um, because once we get all of the paint markings on this and we get a couple of coats of varnish on this, um, I'm gonna hit the panel lines with, with some panel liner for sure. Uh, but I'm, I, I'm liking it, I'm liking it a lot. I want these panels to pop a little bit, but I don't want it to be so obvious. Uh, because obviously then once I get all of that finished, then I'm going to concentrate on the business end of this and get that to a really nice metal. And I'll do that with all clads. And then by the time we get the panel liner on this and we get a couple of coats of varnish on this, I think this is going to look pretty nifty. I've got a base coat of, well, I started with the, the grays. Then I went to my insignia white. Uh, now I've gone to white. So there should be there should be a nice base of, of color on the, the, the physical fuselage and I'm letting that dry. I wanted to talk briefly about a couple of things. Uh, when you get this, uh, this kit, whether you choose to have it printed for you and or whether you print it yourself and, and at the end of the video I will give you complete details on how to get a hold of these files again uh, and uh, give you a sort of a breakdown on, on what you can get because uh, you can get this printed for you and it's, it's wonderful that you, you know, there's a source for printing stuff uh, and you no longer have to be, you know, you don't have to worry about whether or not you have a printer or not. There's a go-to for you now. You, you've got holes here that you can, um, you can actually use to put in uh, probably a three mil if you wanted to put light in there. And uh, you could certainly do that. The, uh, the, original, the original model didn't have anything like that. I'm not lighting mine. So the question is, what do you do with these holes? Well, one of the things that I thought it might be fun to do is actually get some brass rod, which I've done. You can see that now all of a sudden, uh, you don't have a hole, you have uh, a jet. Now I've got to clean these up obviously. They've got little spurs on them and they just need it they need to be cleaned up. But I think that's going to look a lot a, a lot better than just a hull. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do with mine and, and uh, I promise you when all is revealed hopefully this will look pretty good. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is I've been using the all clad paints on the the metal surfaces that I need. Now uh, there's a there's a lot of you that, that, that don't like the all clads because they're lack of paints. You need to be in a well ventilated area. You need to have a respirator on and on and on and on and on and on. 
However, if you can figure out a way to ventilate your, your, your hobby space and use your all clads, whether you're doing aircraft or whether you're doing metallics, I promise you the results you'll get are phenomenal. You, you, you start with your uh, all clad to um, black primer. It's also, it's also a micro filler. Here that is, I'll, I'll, get, you, I'll get you closer. Uh, let me get this away. So this is what this looks like. If you've never used it before, this is their new version of this. And, um, you know, with all the warnings in the world. But I believe this company has changed hands. Uh, so it is, this is sort of the new and improved version of, uh, of their paint. So you would start with the primer, the black primer, and then you go to whatever you're using. In this case, I'm using the Airframe Aluminum. And it's all air, you know, it's all airbrush friendly. You do have to have... Uh, a, a, a thinner that um, that if you if you need it I, I don't know why you would need a thinner but they do make a thinner for some of their other uh, paint paints that they offer uh, and they have an airbrush cleaner as well now <laughs> uh, you know I uh, I know enough to know that if you're gonna put this into to your water brushes you're gonna be in a world of hurt with a water they they will they they don't want you to do that they only want you to stay with water-based paints it will deteriorate the rings on your brush please please check your instructions if you're not sure about your airbrushes uh, reach out to some forums reach out to uh, Iwata themselves there's also a company there's a hobby shop called tag team and they're located in Colorado Springs, Tag Team Hobbies. They're at Wonderfest every year. They are an official uh, dealer for Iwata. So reach out to them and ask as many questions as you'd like uh, b before you, you start putting uh, stuff in your airbrush and yelling at me. <laughs> uh, but the point is, is the results you get are absolutely stunning. So this is my nose cone. And I mean, this, the quality of what you get here is is just is is just extraordinary because it just looks so real and uh, in person I promise you the detail on this is just absolutely extraordinary so when we go to do final final on this uh, I'm gonna be really happy with the results I know I am and I've also been starting to play with 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 various different tones now you know I, I started playing with that on my Kraken 2 build and a lot of you mentioned uh, that you were doing that as well, and it was making a huge difference. What it does here, because uh, essentially what, what you've got here is you've got a couple of tones, and you'll even see here where it is, it is sort of, I've deliberately left this a little, little burnt, a little blemish, so you get, you get some really nice contrast. And then, of course, I'm going to go back and detail these with 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 some even you know more detail, some crumbs and some other things too, to really really accentuate what your actual um, what your what, what what your actual skids are going to look like. Because I, I promise you, it'll make a huge difference. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to find myself a little. Um, just a little one of these uh, there's just a little one of these uh, files and I'm just going around and I'm cleaning cleaning these up now a lot of this is going to disappear because I'm going to hit this again with some more blacks so the intention here is to is to to really only give you some depth some detail uh, when you uh, when you go to to look at the rear of this engine it's not intended to do anything else uh, you certainly could light these and um, you know you'd have no issues there's plenty of room for a light and uh, there's even a, a marked part in the bottom of your model you'll see for for a display stand curiously enough with this with this design you know it does vertical takeoff and landing but uh, there's no <laughs> there's no there's no capacity for it to do that you know there's no there's no thrust capabilities or stabilizing cap capabilities underneath the belly of this thing and of course you know you read a lot of forums about how everybody goes off on the design and how much weight 
would would be on that nuclear missile in the front of this thing and i just laugh because i think it's awesome that people are actually thinking about those things because you know it's interesting um when i was doing sequest many years ago as a producer one of the things that we always love to talk about is what we called the physics pass on the on the on the scripts and uh, even when we were in development and i think that's true of, of most science fiction films when they're in the hands of really good producers and production design teams you do a physics pass and what you're essentially doing is making sure that uh y you've got some logic to your science so that it feels like it could do what it is that you're saying it can do i think when you think about those things you it helps with a lot of the design elements anyway i think it does Okay, so I'm going to install my brass rod, and then um, when we come back, uh, we're going to look at last. We're going to look at the last details on my pilot, and uh, we're going to install his visor and make sure that his helmet color is correct. Uh, and and then I think uh, we'll we'll be good to go with this cockpit, and it will be ready to install. Which means that both elements have to be installed, right? The cockpit has to be installed and your rear exposed engine compartment, which we completed earlier, has to be installed. Before I seal it up, put the two halves together and then I've got to work on that seam um, and then we can do a final blending of the body and uh, we should be good to go. That's gonna be tricky. It's, it's, it's never easy to do that because um, we're probably, the, the smartest thing to do would be to get some epoxy resin, some five minute on that and uh, figure out how we can actually clamp it together and let it let it dry overnight and then we'll be rock solid and then we can come back and putty that up okay we'll we'll look at all of that um, uh, as we progress here I'm ready to install the cockpit and the rear exposed engine so let, let's uh, let's get that done now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just apply a little bit of glue to the this will bite pretty fast but I should have should have a little bit of time to there okay that went in very well so now it is going to be dark in there but I have got I can you can see just in the top corner there where you can't see but I've got a light leak that I'm gonna have to deal with I don't know why I bothered <laughs> showing you that but I wanted to tell you I got a light leak so uh, I'm gonna deal with that right now um, because that needs to be dealt with and uh, so we'll set that aside for a second and uh, let's take a look at the uh, cockpit here, which slides in quite nicely. Um, there's going to be a little bit of a light leak there. Now, curiously, no, it's sitting on the floor nicely. Now, curiously, I have, I, I'm noticing actually for the first time that even though we're going to put this windshield on here you can still see into the inside of here and I don't know if that looks cool I think it needs something I think what I'm gonna do actually is before I do final install on this cockpit sorry I had a bit of schmutz there I think what I want to do is, is I want to add some silver foil in here and that'll do two things. Uh, the, the first thing that it'll do is it will, uh, it will, it will allow me to, to actually um, get a little bit of reflection, some bounce. And, um, and it'll also make this look finished. You know, uh, that, that sort of chrome look is a, very, is a very 70s look. So let me grab some tape, do that before we install and uh, I'll be a lot I'll be a lot happier with that okay so now the cockpit can go in I'm gonna get some uh, get some glue here just pop that on the floor just so that it, it smudges around that's looking good 
and uh, I am I'm happy with that so uh, there we go and um, yeah I, I, I think that I think that 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 foil is going to create some nice bounce and it actually it actually makes it look a lot finished inside of there so I am super happy with that so the cockpit is in and the rear exposed engine parts are in I'm going to do some light blocking here. I can do that with my my tulip, slick tulip. We can we can get that done, and that will just go in there like that. And uh, not that not that it's going to need it because we're not lighting anything. But you know, depending on what conditions it's in, you'll never know. But this way, at least we know that it's nice and clean in there and nice and dark. And uh, I'm going to do the same. I've got a bigger gappage on the other side, so uh, I'm going to get that one light blocked. I'll show you that just so you can see. You can see the, you know, it's quite a, quite, there you go. That's good. It's uh, quite a gap there. So I'm going to just uh, fill that in. And uh, that will be... Uh, that will be good to go. Okay. So that's what I'll do now. I'll get that uh, sorted, and then I will um, I will get the two halves glued together. So when we come back, I'll just be removing the clamps. I'm going to use some five-minute epoxy. I'm not doing that on camera. <laughs> I. I'm just not, but well, that'll give me plenty of time to line, line this up, clamp it, and leave it alone. And then uh, I will be in good shape. This will be ready to go. There's nothing else that needs to go in here now. We are good. Okay, we've had a good, well, 24 hours for this to dry now, so I'm ready to take this out of the clamp. So I'm just going to carefully remove this. And... Uh, see what we've got I'm uh, very happy with this so let's take a look at our seam real quick see what we're dealing with here and uh, I've got a little bit of shine here you can see but the good news is is I can see the epoxy has absolutely filled this gap beautifully I can feel it so that's good news and here as well um, underneath I've got a little bit of gap there but I'll put some uh, epoxy putty in there now and I've got a little bit of uh, stuff I've got to remove here but for the most part um, that's a that's a very nice job so and you can start to see so I've got my my, my cockpit is in obviously and my rear engine exposed parts are in and everything's looking really good so very happy with the result of that and uh, what I want to do now is I want to work on this seam so I'm going to get this seam cleaned up and uh, we will take a look at this fuselage uh, I'll get everything covered and then we'll get a final what 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 is the sort of the final code of that but we can't we can't do that until uh, I've, I've done all my paneling so I have to pick and choose which of these I'm going to hit with the gray so that when we come back and we get that um, lightened up we've got that that texture from the panels but I think that's going to work really well and um, I've got a final final here on my uh, uh, I guess this is the the, the nose cap uh, from which the uh, the bomb is 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 delivered and that has been sufficiently uh, painted with my all clads and then it's got a nice black wash on it but I think it's it's looking really quite industrial and uh, it, it, it's gonna sit in this nose here quite quite well I got a little bit of cleaning up to do obviously because uh, I haven't cleaned out the paint but I think you'll agree that's gonna look uh, that's gonna look quite nifty <clears throat> I've uh, actually made some progress here that I'm quite quite happy with so um, I have the fuselage together now and uh, that's looking pretty good 
for the most part, it was relatively clean, but I think in printing it, um, sometimes I think you get a, just a little bit of, 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 of sag. Now that's operator error because when you print these things, if you're not absolutely perfect with the way you support it, that can happen, especially when the resin is quite soft. But I think it's, um, <clears throat> it's looking quite good. So I'm very happy with it. And uh, now it needs a complete coat of white. Now, the interesting thing about that is, is in looking at some of the details, uh, especially around the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the actual uh, support mechanism for your skids. And then, of course, your, your, your engine on top. Uh, there, there are some areas where they are all uh, metal or painted in, in metal colors. So I'm going to have to be extra careful with that. I've, I've got everything to where I think it's supposed to be, but now I'm realizing that when I um, actually um, install the engine in the back, that I've got um, <clears> to <throat> take that, that metal all the way up and through, but that's okay. Um, I did a lot of the work to make it a lot easier for me uh, to, to, to clean this up. But um, now that that's together, uh, I think that's looking looking really really sharp. And of course, there's only <clears throat> there, there's only uh, the well, it's I haven't got the the cap on it, but you 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 start to see this is is really coming together now. Um, so that's going to get its final sanding and its final white. Um, and then I'm going to do a little bit of uh, panel shading uh, the way I did here with the, uh, the nuclear bomb that sits on the front. Now, I've just hit this with my all-clad chrome. I used uh, aluminum chrome, but uh, that's coming together and looking really nifty. Um, I've got a little bit of work to do here, and then I've got to take this off. And then this segment that dies into this segment that dies into the uh, the actual uh, missile itself, uh, I believe uh, there's some chrome here too. So I'll, I'll check my references. But that's coming together really well. And I like this uh, this color I'm using. It's a combination of um, well, I'll show you here. It's a combination of the uh, extreme metal from AK. This is the AK-476 steel, which I, I like. Um, and I've comboed it with uh, airframe aluminum from Allclad, which is lacquer. So um, everything seems to be behaving. I, I haven't had any issues. So um, I'm pretty happy with that. But um, the other thing I'm doing too is, is I'm using the Allclad lacquer uh, black primer and microfiller. Now, it's a super, super, super uh, thin primer, which is fantastic for, for when you want to accentuate things and you want a light dusting. It, it puts a really nice light dusting, and you can control it, and it dries pretty fast. So you can do some nice blending with it. Um, so <clears throat> that's coming together really well. Um, I've been working on the skids a little bit. Um, and I think I have everything to where I'm happy with it uh, because um, what you don't get obviously with the print is you, you, you know, you, you don't get your skid um, supports. Uh, you can just use some uh, rod uh, uh, aluminum here, which is, um, it's probably about a three mil uh, rod that, f that fits nicely. Uh, I'm using, I'm using just a, uh, plastic uh, because th there's no reason not to uh, but you certainly could and then uh, you certainly could use the metal and then I'm just going to paint everything up but what I've done here is I've added um, a little bit of uh, I've cut down some copper to to create the uh, the, the top of the uh, hydraulic now I've got to clean these up and sand this up and then this will all be painted um, so that it, it's all one color but uh, that's working really well. So this support system has come together really quite nicely. And then the idea here is that uh, I'm going to have to get these all glued up and supported so that when I stand these up, I make sure that everything is, is level 
um, before I epoxy that in um, and, and finish the puttying work uh, for, for final, final, final. So um, I'm not going to, um, um, I'm not going to do that just yet, but that is coming together quite well. So next steps for me is to uh, get these um, uh, get these skids and support arms all glued up and finished. And then once I've done that, and I've got to just you know sand all this down and clean it up. But once it's all glued up and ready to go, uh, then I'm going to move on to the fuselage and its final sanding and final white white, uh, which is uh, a really um, <clears throat> it's a really friendly way to do this because then I can add all of my metals on on, on top of that um, and unless you're going for a really sort of heavy metal look you you don't have to uh, you don't have to do a, a a black primer on top of it although I will tape up my metal areas and 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 dust it with my all clad black uh, primer filler just just so that I can get everything to, to start blending together and then um, once I've done that, we should be ready for final assembly, and then it's just on to decals. So this is really moving along. So uh, we'll we'll, um, we'll come back and take a look when I've got these all glued up and finished. Okay, uh, she's up on her feet, and she's looking pretty good. What I'm doing now is I'm going to uh, get some light curing putty into this uh, crack because I, I didn't get a nice join now the reason why is it's all human error it's all me uh, there's nothing wrong with this print there's nothing wrong with this this kit it's me it's just the way my printer just for whatever reason um, either I, I don't have a I didn't have the correct setting or what have you so I didn't get a perfect uh, a perfect print because it's all engineered to work together so um, just want to get that out there and make sure that everybody understands that this is this is all me. It has nothing to do <laughs> with this exceptionally printed kit. Now, albeit I would say that I definitely uh, ha have some uh, some thoughts about the design, but you know, far be it from me to. Uh, but I'll, 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 I'll wait for final thoughts before I, um, before I really sort of give my final comments. So this is just a little UV flashlight and it's, um, it's going to cure up this putty really nicely. And then I can go ahead and I can use a really nice um, latex uh, water-based putty to smooth this out and get this joined. But this will uh, do a couple of things. It will create a really lovely seal and uh, it, it will strengthen the, these feet. Uh, so that's good. But it's, uh, it's great to have it up on its feet. Really good. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now what I can do is I can... I can run a bead of my putty over this and get this all puttied up. I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use, um, let's see here, I'm going to use, I'm going to use my perfect plastic putty. Um, I like this putty. Um, comes up with water it's a it's a it's a nice white so uh, that's what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna get all this puttied up and um, wash my hands because uh, I've already seen that I've got some smudges but that's okay that's I can do a light sanding uh, I've got to do a light sanding anyway and uh, clean up just to clean up a few of these grid lines uh, before I do final final assembly on everything else but I love the fact that it's all it's all together now and looking uh, really good looking really really good so uh, I'm gonna take this stuff up as we say um, and start to get some 
some putty on here. Um, yeah. I do like to put tape down over, over the model. I'm sure you guys do that too. You know, just keep it nice and clean and cuts down on the sanding as well. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is really coming together. Okay, well, anyway, you don't need to watch me do this. <laughs> I'll be back as soon as I've got this putted up and painted up, and then we'll go to final assembly. Oh, and before we go to final assembly, of course, I, I, I can't, um, I've, I've got to add some stripes, but we'll talk about that when we go to do final assembly, because final assembly doesn't mean finished. Final assembly means then I've got to work on uh, getting the decals on and getting some of the detail painting in place as well, including uh, the, the nose of this uh, has to be um, here, needs to be painted in, in the dark green, uh, this whole panel. As weird as that sounds, that's what needs to happen. But I, I, I don't need to do that right now. From here, I've added the, the green to the front. Um, now, once we get the red on here and all of the, we need to do another gloss coat, uh, semi, I'll probably do a satin, semi-gloss. And uh, we, get, uh, we get all this sort of dialed in. I've got the, uh, the clear uh, glass going into the frame right now. That's 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 gluing up and uh, so everything everything's starting to look good here's the uh, the missile it has a little bit of a I might might put a little um, I don't really want to I don't really want to glue that on uh, f in case I decide to travel with it so I might just put a one one wrap of tape on that and see if I can get that just to sort of not sag but um, I think you'll agree and then you let me show you we just add the engine real quick to the other end and uh, you'll start to see you'll start to see the scope of this thing I mean it's really coming together and uh, here is the, the top so that just that'll drop on on the top like that and then I've got my stabilizer fin that goes on like that and uh, now obviously it's all got to be sort of glued on but I think you, 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 you really start to see this thing come together uh, relatively relatively good I'm, I'm, I'm very excited very happy to have this this coming together and uh, like I said once I've got the red striping on it and you start to work on decals it'll all start to come together and make a lot more sense but boy it's a it's a really it's a lovely scale and it's it's been really a pleasure to put together so um, I'm, I'm excited about uh, getting it uh, to finishing touches. Uh, still a lot to do. I'm standing down my, I've got to let it dry tonight. I'm going to give it a good, good 24 hours to dry uh, my puttying and just to see if I need a little more. I might need one more coat of it. I'm using the, um, uh, the perfect plastic putty. I really, I really like this for this type of a job. And the genius of it is, is it's, it's the perfect color white. So um, it's, it's really blending in beautifully. And uh, I'm just liking the way it, it, it's, all, it's all sort of coming together. Um, I've got a little bit of, I'm noticing here that I'm not keying nicely. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what I want to do about that, but um, it's just not keying nicely. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on that just a little bit. It, um, oh, there you go. I just didn't want to put too much pressure on it because I'm I'm classic for that. But that's looking really good. And then of course my side engines are really coming together. Um, I'll show you I'll show you those. Of course I'm asking for trouble now because I'm trying to put the whole thing together just to show you what it all looks like. But it's really fun to see it all coming together. Yeah. This one, this one's a little loosey goosey, so I, I don't, I want to be careful. But uh, there it is. So uh, you can really start to see it coming together. And I, I'm really, I'm liking a lot of the paint choices that I'm using because 
um, it's really it's really feeling feeling a lot more um, honest and not not like a toy. So I, I'm really I'm really happy with with that. I've still got a few things to do and some cleaning up to do, obviously, but for the most part, she's looking really good. Okay, so I'm going to continue to just sort of play with this uh, in terms of getting these seams cleaned up, um, and then um, we we should be able to to start. Uh, putting final final together and then we can look at striping the red stripe is on the missile the warhead the nuclear warhead the alien fighting machine <laughs> I've got two more stripes to go one on both sides of the of the rear engines got a little bit just a little bit of touch up to do just a little just a little bit right there you can't see it but you can now just there got a little clean up otherwise it went on quite crisply now that's what happens when you don't have Lou Del Meso Aztec dummy masks when you're just putting tape down it's not as crisp it never will be I don't know that's not true don't yell at me for saying that, but I'm a huge fan of Lou's masks. Okay, so that's good. Um, I'll, I'll do that little touch up and then I can uh, get a coat of varnish on this and then this will be ready for decals. Next up is to um, pull the clamps from glowing my rear engines, which we'll do uh, in, the next, in the next segment. Uh, final construction went well. Uh, except for my stabilizing fin didn't uh, didn't I, I, I was struggling to be honest with you with you know how it, it should look because the print itself has a, a rather it, it has a rather thick it has a rather thick sort of uh, top to the to the stabilizer I think in real life it was actually thinner. It was it was more metallic, and it was thinner. Uh, difficult to do, obviously, I unless you were going to uh, cre create a uh, a separate piece, which you could do. So the the in in essence the the frame would be one piece, and then this would be another piece that you would we you would glue on, or you would have the preference to be able to. Uh, to actually cut your own. Now, you could, uh, if you wanted to, you could carefully slice this off, <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> you you would, in in essence, just cut a tin piece, which I did do earlier, and I uh, and I showed you do, doing, but it 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 failed for me. Um, I just didn't I didn't like what I didn't like what it was looking like. So I've printed a new fin. This one's fine. Um, I'm letting my primer coat dry. Then I'm going to paint this white, um, and then the, the the leading edge of the forward frame uh, will will be uh, in the metal. So and that'll be uh, so that's drying now. And that'll be the final piece we put on. So why that's drying? Uh, we're doing decals. And uh, so here I am doing doing decals. I started with um, I started with my emergency control systems. There, there, that is age. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna start adding them. And I have a reference photo behind me. So I'm trying to. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to follow that, although I am also going to, uh, which we're doing here now, I'm putting on, I'm doing one side, and then I'll go around and I'll duplicate the other side. So I'm going to get everything done on one side rather than go back, forward, back, forward. Now, you certainly could do that to try and create some symmetry, but I don't think there's any need to. Um, now, I was able to print these decals off of a website, um, and... <coughs> I'm also augmenting with some of the Rick Sternbach uh, decals here. We've talked about these in the past. There's some really, really relevant decals on here. 
and uh, I, I actually grabbed a couple of these sheets for myself. So uh, I think um, certainly for the missile itself uh, and, and, and some of the other danger and arrow signs, um, I'm going to be I'm going to be definitely using that. So that's what we're doing now is uh, we're just we're just getting these decals on. And uh, I printed these myself with a uh, clear and uh, they go on very well. Um, now, what what I recommend you do if, if you're using your own decals is if, if I've, I have found that the microsol does a really nice job of just settling them down. The contact paper on some of the uh, the some of the paper you'll find, um, <clears throat> at least I find, is is slightly thicker than some of the transfer paper that is used for professional decals. It's, it's slightly thicker, and so you do have to uh, you, you do have to be aware of that. So the microsol really is is something that that really helps them uh, really helps them settle down. So I'm 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 using that. And uh, it's a great effect. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to um, to put these on. So uh, here, let me tip this to camera so you can see. So that's on. They're starting to come together, and uh, I'm just gonna chip away at this because uh, th there's quite a few of them. And uh, then after we've done that, uh, I should be able to uh, get the tail fin on. And uh, we can uh, put this uh, puppy to bed. Oh, I do have um, I do have my my finished uh, cockpit uh, glass ready to go here. That's all glued up, installed, and ready to go. And um, it sits quite nicely on here. And uh, that'll be the final thing we do. Down to details now. All the decals are on and um, I'm doing the final pin wash on the the lines the the panel lines on, on, on this print were exceptionally deep some of them I had to clean up again but for the most part they were exceptionally deep so it's it, it, it's relatively easy to use what I what I've got is is I've got some odorless terpenoid and I've got um, the Aptalon 502 fantasy collection I've, I've got the starship felt filth you all know what this is, um, but for those of you who don't, uh, here it is. Here it is. Let me let me try to. There we go. That's what I'm using. Now, oils might scare some of you. They scared me at first. They are so forgiving, and as long as you've prepped your surface, they are a wonder to work with. If you go back and look at my sand crawler, I used oils for the for the the, the the crustaceans and details. And I've learned over the years that oils they take an awful lot of time to dry, so that can be the bad news if you're not willing to wait. At least sometimes a week. But if you put it in a dry, warm place, it will start to coagulate a lot faster and skin over. But you've got several hours to work with it, and if you don't like it, you, you can just wipe it off especially if your surface is prepped. And what I mean prepped is that you're going to need to seal your surface either with a satin or a gloss and then uh, it will allow the, 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 the pin wash to, 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 to move across the surface, the slick surface obviously. And then when you're done and you don't want it to be that glossy, you can pull it back all the way to a mat and it will lock itself in. So what I've got here is, is I've got a, 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 a a lovely uh, wash that I've, I've created. And the nice thing about these washes is uh, they, they, they're, traveling, they're traveling beautifully in the, in the lines. And then anything I don't like, um, anything I, 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 I don't like that's, that's sort of blotching over, I just, I'm gonna come back with a, with a, a, a Q-tip and just clean this up. But, um, but it's it's traveling really nicely over the surface, and um, it, it it dries quite nicely. Now I did try my uh, Tamiya on here earlier, but um, I just think it's too it's too dark. But um, I'm playing with with my surfaces now, 
and uh, I think I'm uh, I'm getting a really nice result. And so, you know, you don't you don't have to do an awful lot for it to travel along the surface of the of the of the grove, and um, and it, it it's it's really doing a nice job. Now you can see I've got I've got this little spill. Now some of that will be okay, but if I don't want it then all I have to do is just come back, like I said, with a, a Q-tip that's just moistened with my, with my uh, odorless thinner, and this will come right off. So uh, there's, nothing, th 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 there's nothing permanent here, and because all of my decals are all in and they've had a, they've had a good 24 hours to dry, I don't run the risk of, of, of damaging anything. Now, you do have to be careful when you're going around your your decals but that's okay where, where where that is there for instance on the carrier film um and you're concerned then just just take it off now and it it'll come right off and um no you you, you you've got no issues so but you you really want to make this the last thing you do si simply because you want everything to sort of blend in so that that's what I'm doing here, um, and it, it, this is going to take me quite a while because then I've got a. I should have started underneath, uh, which is probably the would have been a smarter move. But you know, when you're doing things for camera, sometimes I forget. Uh, but I'm taking my time on this model, and and that's that's sort of very important. Um, and it's okay, you know, it's it's in space. Uh, it. It, it takes off and it lands from a moon base so you've got all that dust and dirt so it's not going to be perfectly clean um, and that's a good thing so I'm going to continue to get the pin wash over everything that'll get cleaned up and that will finish this uh, and then the final thing I'll do is is I'll glue the canopy in place uh, and, and then I'll, I'll give it some beauty shots and we'll we'll do some final thoughts in 124th scale, a 3D printed resin kit. I'll give you all the information on how you can get this kit in just a minute. Some final thoughts. An awful lot of fun to put together. I took my time on it and I think the results speak for themselves. It's a lot of fun. Uh, trying to research all the decals and, and, and the marking is, is interesting. Trying to get some really detailed shots of the production stills you know and then you're you're sort of on your own guessing some of the things but um i think there's an awful lot here to 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 talk about uh the moon base interceptor um it was the the first line of defense uh, against alien invasions in the television series ufo one season 26 episodes and uh, Mike Trim was the designer of this awesome machine. And um, interestingly enough, as far as I could figure out, there were, there, there were only two actual filming miniatures that are, that are actually in existence today, which I think is really s s interesting and, 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 and sad as well. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive into some of the, the information you'll need if you want to, to build or buy this kit. Now, uh, the, the actual files themselves are available from, uh, from uh, Alain, uh, Alain Rivard. Um, it, forgive me, Alan, Alain, if I'm, if I'm destroying your name, I apologize. So you, it's, there are three choices, uh, 118, 124, 148. If you're going to go 118, uh, that's an awfully big monster. Um, now, uh, it's $40 just for the, the files. Uh, now, interestingly enough, uh, here's his contact information if you want to reach out to him because he has other uh, files and designs as well. So there he is. Now, this is uh, a gentleman by the name of Sean Homer. He's an awesome human being. He has a company called 8kminiatures.com. That's how you reach out to him. And uh, go ahead and check him out. He will print this kit for you. Uh, and he will send it to you. So you don't have to, if you want it, uh, he will actually design it. Uh, well, he'll print those files for you, I should say. I don't see design it. He will print those files for you. And here is 
just some basic information here if you want to go ahead and write it down this is how you can order the kit above uh, or you can have a printing service print it for you now uh, Sean will print anything for you if you have the files so it's a great resource to have if you do not have a printer and you're looking for somebody to print you high-end quality files that's how you do it and so um, I'm 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 pretty uh, I, 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 I couldn't be happy with it now I printed these myself so um, you know that that's that is something to consider I just wanted to sort of go ahead here and get to my my first my first shot here because we're gonna we're gonna look at we're gonna look at the um, the finished model right now okay so here it is in all its splendor and glory I did as best of a job as I could to sort of figure out where all of the the lines were that you need I did not use pinstriping these are all hand painted um, using masking uh, the, the decals are uh, as accurate to the model as I possibly could get them with some additions of my own. And uh, that was an awful lot of fun to, 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 play, with, to play with that. Um, and then, of course, you know, there's the, the, the barrel on top, the, the panel where your, 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 your other guns are. I wasn't sure whether, I think it's a green color. I think it is a dark green. It could be black. It could be silver. I don't know. I went with the green, and I like it. It adds a little bit of zing to the model. Uh, so if it is the wrong color, I apologize, but uh, I I like it. The um, and, and and of course it, it's all had a panel and pin wash. The uh, the I chose not to light the interior because I didn't want to drape any cables. Uh, underneath this, um, I, I I wanted it just in its cleanest, purest form. Could you light this? Absolutely, you can light this. Uh, the, um, the 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 overall design of this and the feel of this, it feels to me is super super accurate. Uh, I love the cockpit. I had a great great time with my brand new vacuum forming machine, so I was able to get my own windshield. I was thrilled about that. And uh, I think that our pilot came out quite well. And of course, I love the fact that I added the, the visor. It's a nice little detail. It's a nice touch for this. For this. Um, and of course, from the rear, uh, I love the exposed engines. I, I had a lot of fun adding some gack and detail to that, as I always like to do. So that was, that was an awful lot of fun. Here's a, a little bit of a closer up detail of that rear. And of course, I loved adding the brass pipe to the rear engine. I know there was probably supposed to be an opportunity there for you to light it, but I chose not to. I, I chose just to keep it clean, but I had an awful lot of uh, fun with it. And uh, so there is the net result. And here she is on the bench. And uh, I could not be, could not be happier with, uh, with this. I also want to give a big uh, shout out to Randy Newbert over at Voodoo Effects. Uh, Randy uh, has a wonderful service and it was through Randy that I discovered uh, that uh, Sean had a printing service and I also discovered through Randy that these kits were, uh, well these files were available but uh, and then you could either choose to print those yourself or you could have it printed for you and I have uh, recently had the opportunity to actually get to know Sean over at the printing service and I'm thrilled I do because you know there's I, I have if don't forget this 3d fig labs so you know you can buy your 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 files from 3d fig labs and you can get those files to Sean and Sean will print out your model for you again th this is a service so you know, uh, but it's quality. I, the prints are absolutely uh, of a quality. I can attest to that. Um, I, I did order a Kraken through, the, through him, and uh, I've, so I've been able to look at the parts firsthand. And I can tell you, his attention to detail when he prints is second to none. It's very impressive. The man knows what he's doing. So there you are, the Moonbase Interceptor from the television series UFO. 
Thrilled to have it in my display. Thrilled to have it on the bench. Thank you for coming along on this journey uh, with me. I greatly appreciate each and every one of my subscribers. And as always, I wish all of you, please, be safe, be well, build something. And I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.